In the previous lectures, we have been uh, discussing about uh, the modal analysis of uh, beams and uh, what we observe uh, that even for simple uh, configurations of, of beams or uh, simple uh, uh, beam uh, models, uh, you can have fairly complicated uh, eigenvalue problem which we have to solve in order to uh, accomplish uh, modal analysis. So, uh, one would be interested in knowing if uh, there are approximate methods which can uh, quickly tell us uh, give an estimate uh, of the eigen uh, frequencies and the modes of vibration of uh, a continuous system and uh, uh, for example, for beams. Now, uh, in our previous uh, lectures, we have, uh, we have discussed some of these uh, methods uh, which are used for approximately uh, performing the modal analysis and uh, as we have discussed that these methods can be improved to improve the accuracy of uh, our analysis. So, today we are going to look at uh, some of these approximate methods applied to beams. So, the first example that uh, so, so let, let me first enumerate the various uh, methods that we have uh, discussed uh, that we will uh, use also in the case of beams. So, for example, we have used the Ritz method. So, these are all so the Ritz method we have also looked at. Now, in the Ritz method, what we need? We need admissible functions. So, we expand the solution in terms of these admissible functions. On the other hand, for the Galerkin in the Galerkin method, we use comparison functions. So, uh, so suppose we have a field variable u, that we expand. in uh, terms of these uh, spatial functions which in the case of Ritz method these are admissible functions. On the other hand in the case of Galerkin method these are comparison functions and then in the Ritz method uh, we use the, the uh, variational uh, formulation. So, we substitute uh, or replace our field variable in directly in the variational formulation of the problem with this expansion, uh, while the in the Galerkin method uh, we do uh, we work with the equation of motion. So, these have uh, its own advantages and disadvantages. For example, uh, in the uh, Ritz method, 
uh, it is sometimes tricky to uh, consider non potential or uh, uh, non conservative forces while it is much easier in the with the, with Ga Galerkin method. On the other hand for Galerkin method this comparison functions they have to satisfy all the boundary conditions of the problem uh, which are di more difficult to construct while these admissible functions must satisfy only the geometric boundary conditions. So, this is an advantage of admissible functions and these can be very easily constructed using polynomials. Or trigonometric functions or other such elementary functions. Not, uh, so uh, today we are going to look at uh, these uh, application of uh, the Ritz method for certain problems in beams. So, the first problem is that of the vibrations of a cantilever beam. So, so let us consider this cantilever beam. Now, the boundary conditions for this uh, beam we have discussed this before. We have the displacement at this uh, point to be 0 and the slope also is 0 for all time. On the other hand on this uh, free end of the cantilever beam, we have the bending moment to be 0 and we also have the shear force at this uh, free end to be 0. Now, so the so since we are applying uh, Ritz method and in the Ritz method we must uh, we use uh, admissible functions which have which have, uh, which must satisfy the geometric boundary conditions now these are the the geometric boundary conditions so whatever uh, admissible functions we choose they must satisfy uh, these conditions so let us consider admissible functions so if i consider a function like this 
So, uh, remember that we are going to use this we are going to use an expansion like this. So, we must choose our our admissible functions which must satisfy the geometric boundary conditions of the problem. So, if we consider uh, this to be let us say linear in x then at x equal to 0 this is satisfied. So, psi 1 at 0 must be 0, but when we look at this boundary condition which is a slope condition. So, del del x of psi 1 at x equal to 0 must also be 0, but if we choose a function like this then this boundary condition will not be satisfied. So, from these considerations one can easily uh, come to the conclusion that this must be the uh, must be the function one of the functions that can be used as a an admissible function then we can use the higher powers of etcetera. So, uh, let us first begin with only a two term expansion. So, which means So, first use uh, we will first use this two term expansion. Uh, so, a 1 and a 2 are the two uh, temporal coordinates. Next we uh, introduce this expansion in the Lagrangian which reads So, this is the Lagrangian of uh, an Euler Bernoulli beam. So, let us consider an Euler Bernoulli beam, the Lagrangian is given like this. Now, we substitute this expansion in here and what we obtain if you And if you simplify this further, so you substitute these expressions of psi 1 and psi 2 and perform the space integration. That means, integration over x, these are polynomials, they can be integrated out very easily. The final result.
So, this is the Lagrangian that you have. Now, this is the Lagrangian of a discretized system with coordinates a 1 and a 2. Now, we can <coughs> write down Hamilton's principle for this. So, this will uh, give us the equations or equation uh, equations of motion and you know that this is going to lead to the Euler Lagrange equations which so these are the equations. for the two coordinates a 1 and a 2 and when you derive these two equations they are of the form So, these are I mean this is the discretized equation for the cantilever beam. Now, we perform the standard modal analysis for uh, this discretized system and we can calculate the Eigen frequencies the circular Eigen frequencies and the modes of uh, these Eigen vectors which can be used to determine the modes of uh, vibrations. So, let us first look at the Eigen frequencies. So, when you do this calculation So, this is the uh, first circular Eigen frequency of the cantilever beam calculated from uh, this discretized equation and the second one is obtained like this. Now, if you uh, do the exact calculation, so which we have discussed before, so this is the exact, this turns out to be Now, you can make a comparison. So, while these the, the, the fundamental circular Eigen frequency compares very well with the exact the uh, second uh, circular Eigen frequency this is on the higher side. So, as we have discussed before this uh, Ritz method uh, gives us uh, 
uh, an upper bound on the uh, eigenfrequencies. So, the so what when we calculate by this approximate method, we are going to get this omega two. Now, what this tells us is the actual eigenfrequency is less than this value. Similarly, here also you can see the actual eigenfrequency is less than this value. So, this is this is an upper bound uh, property of uh, uh, this uh, eigen uh, frequencies calculated from the Ritz method. Now, let us uh, look at the eigen functions. So, when we substitute here, we are going to calculate omega and a. So, the eigen pairs. Uh, so, we are going to get these eigen vectors and using these eigen vectors, we actually construct our eigen functions using the expansion that we have used. So, so we do a dot product. So, the first eigen vector that we get with uh, corresponding to omega 1 which is a 1. So, if you dot product with the vector of the admissible functions. So, you get the first eigen function and this turns out to be So, this a 1 vector is actually so this was the a 1 vector. So, we take the dot product with this psi vector. Similarly, the a 2 vector was actually this. So, this is our eigen function, second eigen function. Now, uh, as we discussed that these uh, admissible functions do not satisfy, I mean they are not required to satisfy the uh, the natural boundary conditions which in our case of this cantilever beam these are the uh, moments and the the shear force and the bending moment being zero at x equal to l so let us look at so what we have is this must be zero but since so this this was the uh, bending moment condition this was the shear force condition. Now, let us see how well these Eigen functions uh, satisfy these conditions. So, if you calculate for example, w 1 double prime at l that turns out and, and divide this by w 1 at l that turns out to be and similarly so we are trying out with the first eigen function we take double derivative of that and see how close to 0 this is. Now, as you can see with increasing length of the beam, this is going to go to 0 quite fast and similarly for the, uh, the shear force. Similarly, you can do for uh, w 2 the second eigen function, 
but since our we are more confident about our first eigen function. So, here I have uh, taken this example of the first eigen function. Now, uh, but I mean this may or may not be satisfactory for the purpose. So, uh, what we can try out is we can increase the number of terms in our expansion. So, in the second example, I have considered uh, with four terms in the expansion and I have uh, taken the admissible functions in this form. So, psi 1 is uh, the square of x over l. So, I have con go gone up to uh, 4 terms in this expansion and when I calculate the in the pro uh, following the procedure that we just discussed, if you calculate this uh, eigenfrequencies, so this turns out to be And remember the exact was so this one. So, now you can see that with 4 term expansion, we have uh, come pretty close to the exact solution. And now, once again, uh, if you calculate the first Eigen uh, function, this turns out to be Similarly, you can calculate the second Eigen function and third and fourth. Now, uh, we are uh, focusing on the first again let me calculate the this ratio which will tell us how far the, geom uh, the natural boundary conditions are satisfied at the free end. So, these are at L. So, now you can see with in, uh, increase in the number of terms in the expansion, even the natural uh, boundary conditions at the free end which are the bending moment and the shear force, uh, they are also going to 0. Uh, quite rapidly. So, uh, so, as you increase the number of terms in the expansion, 
you are going to get accurate uh, solutions of the eigenfrequencies as well as the uh, eigenfunctions will also get more and more accurate and they are going to automatically satisfy uh, uh, they, they will tend to satisfy the, the natural boundary conditions which you have neglected uh, while doing this expansion. Now, let us look at uh, this uh, the, these uh, eigen uh, functions which I have uh, plotted here. Uh, so, so, this is the, the first eigen function the solid line is the exact uh, and this chain dotted line is with, with two uh, term expansion and with the four term expansion you have this dashed line. So, you can see that uh, the, the Eigen functions they also tend to uh, go close to the exact Eigen functions which we have discussed in, in one of our previous uh, lectures. Now, let us uh, go over to a, a second example this example is of a plane frame. So, let us look at this plane frame. So, we have this uh, plane frame constructed out of two uh, beams which are welded at this point. So, for simplicity we consider that the length of both these beams is the same. So, we have L and L. Now, here we have a built in end of this frame and here it is a pinned, pinned end. Now, uh, so for these are essentially two beams which have a junction. So, we must we can treat them like that. So, uh, let us consider that the coordinate here is x and the displacement in this direction for this beam horizontal beam is represented by w 1 and this coordinate is y and the quad and the, the field variable for this vertical beam is uh, w 2. Now, uh, we intend to uh, determine the Eigen uh, frequencies and modes of vibration of this frame. Let us first write down the boundary conditions. So, at this built in end, so these are the boundary conditions at the built in end, at the pinned support. we have displacement uh, as 0 and the bending moment so the coordinate is y so this is uh, 0 now along with these uh, boundary conditions we also have this junction. So, what are the conditions at this junction? So, 
So, the first uh, condition say if we consider this beam the horizontal beam then there cannot be any uh, any vertical displacement of this beam at this point assuming that there is no axial uh, or this action this beam is actually rigid. So, there is no uh, axial displacement at this point in that case this point of the horizontal beam cannot have any displacement. Similarly, by similar reasoning for this vertical uh, beam cannot have any displacement in the horizontal direction. Now, since this point is welded, so these two beams are welded at 90 degree. So, under deflection as well this angle has to be maintained, which means So, this is the slope condition thus the these two slopes uh, they uh, must must uh, maintain a, a certain relation. The second condition is on the bending uh, moment. So, this is course y. So, there must be an equilibrium. Uh, so, from those considerations we can obtain this bending moment uh, condition at this junction. So, so, now we have all the conditions required for uh, this uh, plane frame. Now, let us identify the, the geometric boundary conditions. So, here So, these are the geometric boundary conditions for the problem. So, we must satisfy. Uh, so, when we are following the Ritz method, we have to satisfy uh, these geometric boundary conditions and the others the natural boundary conditions uh, are not so much essential. So, so let us uh, now consider this expansion. I will write out this expansion which has been constructed using polynomials. etcetera. So, there can be various ways of constructing uh, uh, this expansion, they are these uh, individual polynomials which 
uh, satisfy the geometric boundary conditions. So, these are etcetera. So, I have considered these uh, these expansions, but they I mean they can be these uh, admissible functions, but these functions can be constructed in various other ways. Now, <coughs> using these expansion uh, these two expansions of the field variables, we write out the, the Lagrangian. So, we have uh, written out the Lagrangian for these individual uh, beams and uh, when we substitute these expansions in uh, this Lagrangian and integrate out the, the space part. So, here we integrate over x, here we integrate over y and we obtain the discretized Lagrangian from where finally, as we so, in the previous example, we are going to get the discretized equation in this form. Now, these are the matrices uh, the mass matrix and the stiffness matrices uh, stiffness matrix and uh, we uh, again perform the modal analysis for this discretized system and if you do that then the result for the first two modes. So, uh, <coughs> these are the, the first two uh, circular Eigen frequencies of the system, which uh, has been calculated uh, using this Lagrangian and the expansion that I discussed just now. So, uh, this uh, figure shows the, the first two modes of vibration of this plane frame. So, you can see that so, so this is the fundamental uh, 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 frequency and the corresponding uh, eigen, uh, mode of vibration. So, you can see that uh, 
this angle of 90 degrees being maintained in both these cases, since we have uh, chosen our admissible functions which satisfy these, uh, these uh, geometric boundary conditions already. So, uh, so this was an example of a plane frame. Uh, next, we uh, look at this uh, Timoshenko beam, which is a little more uh, sophisticated model for beam, which considers also um, the, the shear deformation of the beam. So, we will cons consider a simply supported Timoshenko beam. Now, if you recall the the Lagrangian The Lagrangian of this Timoshenko beam is given by this expression. Now, uh, in order to simplify this, we use the definition of the shear modulus and we also define what is known as the slenderness ratio. In that case, the Lagrangian gets simplified So, with these, these definition and uh, we, are, we can uh, take out the material constants out and simplify. So, this actually is L tilde. Now, we can uh, let, let us look at the boundary conditions of a simply supported Timoshenko beam. So, the boundary conditions are obtained uh, through variations, you can write them as So, these are the geometric which we need to satisfy when we are performing the Ritz uh, analysis. So, in order to satisfy these boundary conditions, we can choose We can expand these uh, 
field variables. For example, psi can be expanded as etcetera and w can be similarly expanded etcetera. So, you can see that these boundary conditions actually can be satisfied. So, psi for example, can be satisfied by using uh, an expansion like this, whereas So, if the length is L, then one can use uh, the expansion like this. So, so using uh, uh, these uh, admissible functions, we have expanded the field variables and finally, after applying the variations etcetera. we will obtain the discretized equations of motion. Now, uh, if you perform the modal analysis of uh, this discretized equations, then the first uh, non dimensionalized uh, circular Eigen frequencies obtained as 0.612 second one is obtained as 2.087 and so on. The fifth is obtained as 9.889, the sixth is obtained as. Now, there, there is a reason why I am writing 1, 2 and then 5, 6, there are of course, uh, other uh, circular Eigen frequencies in this uh, uh, range, but let us look at the the Eigen functions, which are sh uh, shown here. So this is the first uh, Eigen function, and you can see the uh, uh, first Eigen uh, circular Eigen uh, frequency. So, and you can see the the mode of vibration in the first uh, mode for the Timoshenko beam. And similarly, this is the second uh, circular Eigen uh, frequency and the second mode of vibration. So, this uh, these two look very similar to a normal uh, beam. Now, let us look at this fifth and the sixth. Now, here there is hardly any transverse uh, displacement, it is very small, not visible in, uh, in this, in this uh, figure. Uh, these are actually the shear modes of the Timoshenko beam and these frequencies are substantially higher. So, uh, what we have looked at in this lecture today, we have uh, uh, discussed about the approximate methods for uh, modal analysis or for discretization to, so to say we can discretize the equation of motion of the beam and uh, we have used the ritz method for discretization uh, one can also use the galerkin method in a similar manner uh, the only thing is in the galerkin method since we uh, use um, comparison functions so they are little more uh, cumbersome for 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 cal for uh, calculations uh, is to construct 
uh, on the other hand the Ritz method we have seen the, the, the admissible functions are very easy to compute and if you increase the number of terms in your expansion then you can also satisfy the or, or you can also uh, make this, uh, this natural boundary conditions which are neglected while uh, constructing the uh, admissible functions. So, you can make uh, uh, these natural boundary conditions also uh, uh, to, to be 0. So, so, the satisfaction of the natural boundary conditions. So, you uh, with increasing number of terms you can uh, satisfy these natural boundary conditions better. So, uh, with that we conclude this lecture.